Good morning. It is great to see everybody this morning. And it is great to have those of you who I can't see, uh, but I will trust that you are there nonetheless on uh, Facebook and on Zoom. Uh, our family keeps growing, and that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So um, here we find ourselves on the third Sunday in Advent, and uh, we have a wonderful uh, service for you as we continue to prepare our hearts uh, to once again celebrate the coming of, uh, of Jesus into our world and all that he brings with us, the hope and the peace and the joy and the love. So let us get started by sharing our joy and love with one another. Uh, so let's just, uh, we can wave at one another. If you are on Facebook um, or Zoom, you can type in. Um, yeah, Lori is hiding back here as our uh, reader today. All right. And uh, Dick will play us into the service this morning. How good is it to hear that Christmas music and the chimes? Thank you, Dick. Uh, we are ramping up for Christmas, and as such, uh, there is a lot going on. Uh, I want to, first of all, though, um, thank everyone for all of the items that you brought in for the care packages for uh, Afghanistan. Uh, I dare say that Adam and uh, Cameron, they are going to be set until they uh, come back to uh, the States um, I'm not sure about Cameron, but I know Adam is supposed to come back at the end of February, and then they have to quarantine for 14 days before they're actually allowed to come home. So sometime middle toward the end of March, we will have him back. Uh, my family decided that we're going to wait and do Christmas so that we can ex uh, include him in all of that. So, But thank you very much. Um, I now have a lot of packing to do, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, Today was the day to uh, get me if, get me information if you were going to be doing carols uh, and recording them. So um, if you haven't spoken to me yet, just let me know. Um, and then next Sunday will be when I need those recordings in um, so that I can get everything together. The reason that I need the, uh, the names of them today is I need to start putting together the Christmas Eve service. 
And so I need to be able to know what I have in terms of uh, resources to put it all together. And then um, after next uh, next Sunday, I will be putting that whole service together. So um, and it, it's going to be wonderful. Um, in addition to our Christmas uh, offerings this year, something that we have always done, but initially I was going to just let go because I thought it would be too difficult to do with uh, the hybrid and everything that's going on. And um, But uh, the more I got to thinking about it, I decided that if there was ever a year that we all potentially needed a blue Christmas service, that it was this year. Uh, a blue Christmas service, for those who are not familiar, sometimes called a longest night service. Um, but it is generally focused on those for whom, um, as a result of a personal loss, be it the loss of a loved one or the loss of a job or the loss of health or mobility, um, that Christmas is not the happy, joyful time that it is for most. Um, this year, however, with the um, added layer of the pandemic and all that it has brought into our world, I realize that there are additional losses and people who might ordinarily not be thinking about losses within their lives because it's not quite so obvious. But And where this honestly came from is when I read for you guys a couple of weeks ago, "Twas the month before Christmas. It was the feedback that I got about Thank you. Can I get a copy of that? Because that's how I feel. It doesn't feel like Christmas to me. We can't do what we ordinarily would do. So a blue Christmas service holds all of that and honors that. And uh, because honestly, everything that we're going through and for all the reasons that you may not feel that this year is a Merry Christmas, those are all the reasons that Jesus came. And so we are going to honor that and celebrate that gift um, uh, at the Blue Christmas service. It will be December 21st, which is a Monday night. It is going to be virtual only, um, but both on Facebook and on Zoom. Uh, so everybody will have ample opportunity. Uh, 7.30 p.m., and I believe it, in your bulletins there should be all of the meeting info and uh, call-in information and et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you're confused about anything, um, please talk to me. Uh, Christmas Eve, uh, you can mark your calendars, we'll be at 7.30. Again, this will be a hybrid, both in person and also online. And I am working very, very hard to figure out some way to include the online folks, even in being able to see the outside singing of Silent Night. I may, not, may or may not be able to figure it out, but, uh, but I'm working on it. Uh, speaking of Facebook folks, I've been working on solving that problem. I've got a new cable coming next, or, uh, literally this afternoon, uh, but I couldn't get it here for today. So um, hopefully we don't lose you. If we do, stick on. We'll get you. Um, we'll get you right back. Um, lastly, uh, we can still order poinsettias until next week. You see, we have some of them up here already. Um, so many so that um, Lori needed to make me a little path so that I could get up to the altar. So. They are 10:50, um, and you can let Lori know by next Sunday if you would like to uh, add your name to that in honor of or in memory of a loved one. Okay, I think uh, I think we are to um, birthdays that we are celebrating, and uh, today. And if I'd have realized it sooner, I would have wished her a happy birthday sooner. But today is Diane Seal's birthday, so happy birthday, Diane, and. Um, She's not here. Most of you don't know her, except Lori does. Today happens to be my sister's birthday, too. So, Kath, happy birthday. She is my younger sister, which I don't mind saying any time other than when she turned 50. Um, so, um, uh, so that's very special. Kathy was actually born on Friday the 13th. So, um, Tuesday, we wish a very happy birthday to Sean Zeber and Landry Leedy. Um, Wednesday, Ruth Benfer celebrates her birthday. On Friday, Jim Ziss celebrates a birthday. So happy birthday early, Jim. And on Saturday, Elisa Smith celebrates her birthday. So a lot of reasons to celebrate even as we look forward to celebrating the birth of our Savior once again. Oh my goodness. Let's pray. 
God, we really do have a lot to celebrate. I know that with everything that's going on, sometimes it may not feel like it. Sometimes it may not even seem like it. So many of the plans that we have have needed to be canceled or altered or in some way not what we had hoped for. But through it all, God, we still celebrate the birth of your son, the, the coming of the peace and hope and joy and love that you sent into the world when you sent him to us. And so we pray, God, that you would help us to lift that up in our hearts. Let it be alongside the sadness for what we are missing so that both can be honored in our lives at this holy time of year. We pray that you would be with us as we worship and that you would bless all that we do so that we truly may be the followers that Jesus calls us to be. And it is in his name that we pray this morning. Amen. All right. Lori is going to join me in lighting the Advent candle, and I located it. It's right down there. Okay. So you can grab that if you'd like. All right. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, ribbons and wreaths. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it's tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light the candle of joy because company is coming. the children's time so um, I invite if you would like to come up and um, and this time Kara I will have you stand on the blue dots and Odin you stand on the red dots so we have a great way for you to come up it's not the same way as it used to be but it's still a good way how are you guys good. yeah you getting ready for Christmas yep. oh wait a minute I, I'm seeing Kara's and I'm like hang on just a second we need something a little more fun I'm not sure my mom bought this for me and she said, can you wear this in church? I said, sure, why not? Although I feel like the nose is where my mouth ought to be. Well, first of all, do you see Bartholomew? Bartholomew is our shepherd on a search. Where is he? You see him? He's up here somewhere. Where is he? You don't see him? Okay, where is he? He's right there on the Christmas tree. He's getting there. He's trying to figure it out. Kara put it into a manger, a feeding trough for animals. But one night, a family came into that stable where the manger was, and a, and a lady gave birth to a baby, and she laid that baby in the manger. Who do you think that baby was? It was Jesus. And so the first tree's wish really did come true, didn't it? It might not have been a palace like it was thinking about, but it did hold the King of Kings, because that's who we call Jesus. Now the second tree, it got cut down too, but it didn't get made into a big sailing vessel either. It got made into a fishing boat. It was on the Sea of Galilee one day, and a man came by, and he stood in the boat, he stood a little bit offshore, 
and he taught all kinds of people all about God. Who do you think that man was? Go with the obvious answer. Jesus. It was Jesus. When in doubt, the answer is always Jesus. And that's true in life, actually. When in doubt, the answer is always Jesus. So Jesus stood on that fishing vessel that belonged to the disciples that you're probably trying to think of their names, right? Yeah. Yeah. Belonged to James and John. And he taught everybody all about God. And so... The tree might not have been a vessel that sailed the seven seas, but it did bring people to a new place because they knew how much God loved them. And the last tree, it was finally cut down, only it wasn't turned into a great steeple or anything like that. It was made into a cross. And it was really, really sad. In fact, it wished that it had never been planted because a cross was a terrible thing because people died on a cross. And one day a man was nailed to the cross that the tree was made out of. Now, who do you think that man was? Jesus. Jesus. Good answer. And that tree, when Jesus was lifted up on the cross, it got its switch as well. Because when you look at a cross, even to today, what do you think about? Jesus. You think about Jesus and how much God loves us. So all three of the trees got their wish but maybe not the way that they would have thought. And that's how God works. God will always give us our wish, but sometimes it doesn't happen the way we think. So we need to be able to trust God and know that God always wants what's best for us and that ultimately God is going to help us to be happy. All right? That's cool, right? All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for maybe not always giving us what we want, but always giving us the desires of our heart. Thank you that you can use us in so many different ways. Teach us to be patient and to trust you so that even when it doesn't seem like our dreams are coming true, we look for the ways that you make them true in your own way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. And if you've got these at home, you can add your your next little flame to it and I'm tossing these so we've got orange blue brown dark red and light red which would you like Kara light red all right good choice all right how about you well dark red dark red all right you guys are getting much better at the catching All right, we'll get this on here. Joy, there we go. All right, that's a little hard to talk in. (laughs) It is cute. All I could see flopping around was the nose. All right. Our scripture reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 4. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Lori. And thank you to Kay, who is monitoring Facebook, and uh, while we've been... Uh, doing all of this, Facebook dropped out, and um, I, I, as soon as I looked up, I got a thumbs up from Kay, meaning that it's back up again. So um, hopefully this new cable will work. Uh, if we would like to say a prayer about that, that would be great. The, um, the saint metal that I have hanging on the computer is not doing its job anymore. Our second scripture reading today comes from John's Gospel. And uh, this is part of Jesus' teaching 
in his life. A familiar teaching, but one that has wonderful lessons that we could dive into every day. We find it in the 15th chapter of John's Gospel, verses 5 through 11. So Jesus says this, Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a use, useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God, we do give you thanks because in so many ways you bless our lives and fill us with joy. As we turn to your word this morning to seek the guidance and the truth and the light that we know that it can reveal, we pray that you would open our hearts and help us to see your way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever wondered why all the candles on the Advent wreath are purple except one? Has anybody ever wondered that? It's a good question. It's not talked about very often, sometimes in children's sermons, but obviously I didn't today. I can't even remember a lot of people asking me about it, so I guess a lot of people just figure, well, they must know what they're doing, so I don't understand it, but I'm going to let it go. But it is. The first two Sundays, we light purple candles, and then today, on the third Sunday, we light a pink candle. Now, if you recall, now we're testing your memories, and I know there's a lot going on, but the first Sunday in Advent was the hope candle. We talked about hope and how Jesus came to bring that into our lives. Last Sunday was the peace candle, and we talked about peace and how Jesus came to bring that into our lives. And today, as you've already heard, Lori and I let, lit the candle of joy. And it's that focus on joy that is the reason why today's candle is pink. So, do you think about joy when you see pink? If you've ever had a girl baby, you do. <laughs> Sarah's nodding. But a boy baby is just as happy and that's blue. So, why do we have pink as the color of joy? Well, we may not think of it as a color associated with joy, but pink, or the actual color is rose, if we want to be technical, has been a long-standing tradition in the church representing rejoicing. So, joy. It has been considered in the church to uh, represent the beginning of the transition from darkness into light and from penance into celebration. So, if you boil that all down, what you could say is that the third Sunday in Advent, our pink candle, represents a turning point. We have reached the turning point in our Advent celebration. Next week we'll be back to purple, but very soon we will be celebrating the birth of Christ, which is the white Christ candle, the same one that we light every Sunday as a reminder of his presence with us. And you know, joy is an important thing to rejoice about. We may not think of it as terms of peace, but it is a good thing because joy is something that we have been created for. You don't have to have pink in order to enjoy, uh, have joy in your life. In fact, as a female carpenter, I've never really appreciated those pink tools. They're not created the same as the other tools, and, uh, and, and, and give me something that's, um, that's a little bit hardier, because uh, I don't want to break it. But God has created all of us for joy. 
In addition to hope and peace, it's one of it's another reason why Jesus came, so that we could have joy in our lives. I mean, why do you think that joy to the world is such a loved Christmas carol? Which, by the way, if I can plant the seed, believe it or not, that is not a carol that anyone is singing and recording. So, just in case everybody thought that was what everybody else was doing, nobody is doing joy to the world. Interestingly, however, just as a side note, Joy to the World was not written about the Nativity. It wasn't inspired by the New Testament at all. The author was inspired by Psalm 98 and praising God for all that God brings into our lives. But that doesn't matter because joy does come with Jesus. When that baby was born, his birth and life and then death and saving resurrection secure joy for all of us. The question then becomes, if this is why Jesus came, and this is what he has secured through all that he has done, why isn't there more joy in the world? Why is there sadness? I mean, I don't know about you, are you happy all the time? I'm not. And you know, that's okay, but why is that? If Jesus came to bring joy to the world, then why isn't there more happiness all throughout the world? Why aren't we happy all the time? Well, to begin with, we need to understand that in a spiritual sense, joy and happiness are not the same thing. I know that we tend to use them interchangeably, and I'll admit, if you went, got home and picked up a thesaurus, you will find them used interchangeably. But again, in a spiritual sense, joy and happiness are really two very different things. The experience is somewhat similar, but not entirely. You see, happiness, if we really think about it, happiness is dependent upon our situation and circumstances. Joy, on the other hand, results as a result of having the source of joy within us, in our lives, in our hearts. When, if we are happy or not is primarily the result of whether things are going well in our life. If we are experiencing losses or troubles or challenges or for whatever reason we are feeling overwhelmed and like those circumstances that we're in are never going to end, well, it's natural to be sad in those situations. Not even Jesus expects us to walk around and be a bunch of Pollyannas. That's not what the scripture is talking about. It's not what any of the Bible is talking about. Sadness is a natural and appropriate reaction to when bad things happen to good people or to any people in our world. Joy, on the other hand, can be a constant in our lives. Because you see, joy is not dependent upon circumstances. The truth is, you can have deep, abiding joy even when everything is blowing up all around you. You can be in the depths of sadness and still have joy in your heart. I know that sounds like a contradiction, but you see, joy is this consistent, deeply rooted sense of contentment in our hearts. It's a contentment that comes from knowing that whatever our circumstances are, no matter how sad and terrible they are, that they're not going to last forever. It's a contentment that comes with knowing that we're not alone and that we ultimately have the victory through Jesus. Knowing that we have that victory is the source of our joy. Knowing that Jesus has overcome the world and because of that, he will overcome our circumstances as well one way or another. So you see, joy is actually very different. We can have joy in the world and in our own lives, even in the midst of like what we're going through right now. So how do we do this? I mean, hopefully this sounds like a good thing, to have this sense of deep abiding com uh, contentment in your hearts, even when everything is falling apart around you. This is a gift that Jesus came to give all of us. So how do we seize upon it? Well, Jesus tells us in the scripture from today. He lays it out very plainly. He is the source of our joy. That's the first thing that we need to know. 
If you are seeking joy in anything else in this world, you're not going to find it. Happiness, perhaps, but not joy. If there's one thing that I learned when I was downtown at the uh, World Trade Center site, it's that anything of this world can be destroyed. But God can never be destroyed. And Jesus is God. So when we put our trust in God and in Jesus and have our joy in him, then we can count on that. That is the foundation we can build our life upon and we can have that deep-seated sense of contentment all the time that, no, that lets us know, reminds us that we have that victory and that he will on our behalf overcome. And then he lays it out to his disciples. He says what we need to do to have joy and in fact have it in full is to follow him. Be his disciples. Obey his teachings. Live in his love. This is what he lays out. And then he says that we will have joy, not just any joy, but his joy in our hearts. When we follow him, obey his teachings, all of his teachings, and live in his love. And by the way, the last two could almost be part one and part two. Because if you recall, all of Jesus' teachings really had to do with love, ultimately. So living in Jesus' love means obeying his teachings. Following him means seeking to want to follow those teachings and to live in his love. And when we do, then Jesus promises us that we will not only have joy in our lives, no matter what is going on, but that we will have his joy and it will be full. I came across the story of a man in the third century, about 1800 years ago. He was near death. Before he died, he wrote these last words to a friend. He wrote, it's a bad world, an incredibly bad world. But I have discovered in the midst of it a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. They have found a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians, and I am one of them. This is the joy that Jesus came to bring us. This is the joy that that little baby is born for. Because this is the joy that we have all been created for. The only difference is whether or not we seize upon it. You see, this third century man refers to this joy as a secret. It's not a secret. Jesus made it very plain, spoke plainly to his disciples and speaks very plainly to all of us. It's not a secret. It's a promise. When we follow Jesus as his modern day disciples, following his teachings and seeking to live in his love to the best of our ability, faltering sometimes, yep, messing up from time to time, you betcha, but still being intent on trusting Jesus, looking to him as the source of our joy, not necessarily worrying about worldly things that might bring a little bit of happiness for a short period of time, but rather making our first priority, Jesus who makes joy a constant in our lives all of our days, no matter what is going on. There's nothing wrong with seeking the things that make us happy. I do it myself. Why do you think I like going to Disney and playing with the Yankees so much? That, brings, that makes me happy. But neither of those things, as great as the mouse is, Mickey Mouse cannot bring me joy in my life. Only Jesus can do that. So let's seize upon this promise. Because like any gift, we only receive it when we're willing to receive it. And all Jesus asks us to do is to follow him and his teachings and live in that love. And then we will be his disciples. We will be, as this third century man says, one of the Christians. He acknowledged that he was one of them. And that's how he was able to die with joy in his heart. I am one of them too.
Are you? Amen. stopping that when Advent's over, if that's all right with you, Dick. As we come to our time of uh, prayer, um, I have the, um, the sad but hope-filled duty to um, ask for prayers for um, three different um, wonderful families and amazing women that uh, we have lost um, over the past few days. Yesterday I had the honor of um, officiating at Jerry Zimmerman's mom's service over in Castalia. Uh, her mom, Kate, was a wonderful, faith-filled lady, and uh, we celebrated her life. But I would ask that you keep Jerry and all of her family in your thoughts and prayers. And then, um, I'm not exactly sure what order, because sometimes these come so quickly, but um, I learned um, from Luke let me know that uh, last week we prayed for Shirley May, the wife of um, former minister here, Larry May. Um, Shirley uh, did not survive her illness. Um, Shirley, Shirley passed away, I, I'm not even sure what day. Um, but um, So please keep Larry and Kay and Cindy and the whole May and extended families, uh, Melissa uh, and all others in your thoughts and prayers. Um, Shirley was an amazing woman and meant a lot to this church. Um, and she will be terribly, terribly missed. Um, and lastly, another lady who will be missed. I haven't been able to see her since all of this started because um, of lockdowns and COVID. But um, our very own Doris Block passed away at the Willows. Um, again, I'm, I'm losing track. Toward the end of the week. Um, and um, so please keep um, Doris's family in your thoughts and prayers. I saw the most wonderful thing that her family is going to do. It was on her obituary. Um, they are not doing a service. Doris was 99 years old. So they're going to do a service, I think it's May, on her 100th birthday. So they are truly going to celebrate her life. And, and what a wonderful thing that is. So... Um, let us go to prayer, keeping these families and all of those who have lost someone and who have um, a, a newly empty seat at the table at this holiday time. Let us pray.
God, there are so many things in our hearts that we rejoice to, for. And we know that all of these blessings, God, come for, from you because you created us to have joy and happiness in our lives. Sometimes in the midst of this broken world, the happiness is not possible. But remind us that because Jesus is the source of our joy, we can always have that contentment in our hearts, always knowing that we have the victory of overcoming. Even as our hearts rejoice in you, God, our hearts also grieve. We grieve with these three families that we have mentioned and with all of those who, for whatever reason, are missing someone this, fam this holiday season. Whether that death was recent or years ago, that empty seat never quite gets filled, which means that the ache is always present. We do ask God that you would uh, reach out to Jerry and to the May family and to Doris's family and that you would lift all of them up in your love. We celebrate the life of these three amazing women. We thank you for the life of Kate and all the ways that she touched those around her. We thank you for Doris, God, and for the joy that she brought into her family's life through her smile and kind ways. And God, we, we thank you for Shirley and for all of the many ways that she blessed so many of us, even here in this church during Larry's many years. We pray that now that you have received all three of these into the home of heaven that you have prepared for them, that you would come alongside their families and remind them that this earth is a stopping place, a place on the way to heaven, and they will be reunited once again. In the meantime, God, we pray for all who are continuing to struggle in the midst of this pandemic, whether it has affected them in terms of their health or their finances or their job or other ways. God, we pray for those who are experiencing loneliness as a result of being locked down and trying to stay safe. You have called us to be your church, to be your hands and feet. God, show us new ways to do this because we can't do it always in the old ways. We can't gather. We can't hug. We can't reach out as we once did. And yet, God, you are our creative God. You created everything that is out of nothing to show us how we can reimagine being your church, even in these difficult times, so that we truly become that family where no one is left behind or forgotten. Jesus taught us how to do this. It's why he came. And it's why we end our prayer with the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our turn. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, it's been more than nine years and I almost said trespasses. <laughs> it still is there. I think whatever we learn as kids is always somehow in our heads. Do be safe as, uh, as you go around. A uh, good thing is numbers are going down in the Bellevue area, uh, but, um, but it's still a lot out there. And uh, we want to be enjoying and celebrating with all of you for many, many years to come. Um, we will also have a joy. It's a private affair, but um, we will be um, moments after the service, after I say goodbye to all of you, we will be officially, or Denise is going to be cutting the ribbon, on the official Gary Adams Memorial Broadcast Recording Studio. So uh, we will be doing that this afternoon. And... Um, if you would like, beginning next week, to uh, see the area a little bit, you can uh, go up the top of the steps and uh, look in. Right now, we've got a giant green screen up there in addition to the regular little recording studio because of the pageant. Uh, by the way, if you're in the pageant, I'm going to be calling you if I haven't already. Let us leave this place not only remembering that God is with us, but knowing that Jesus came to be our hope and our peace, our joy, and our love. 
Let this so burn in our hearts that it overflows for all that we come into contact with so that they can also know how much God loves them, even as God loves us. May the power of the Holy Spirit enable us to do, enable us to do this and all that we are called to on this day and all days. Amen. Oh.